Hey there, podcasters. Welcome to another episode of the Thriving Dog Podcast. I'm your host, Tim Berthold, and today on the show, we're lucky, lucky to have Michael Bebus. He's the founder of Cool Skins Pet Vests. Cool Skins is a vest that keeps your dog cool in the summer and warm in the winter. Michael started Cool Skins after his friend's dog died from heat stroke on a hike. He researched and developed a dog vest that pulls heat away from your dog's body, which helps your dog keep a comfortable body temperature in the summer heat and, of course, to stay warm in the winter. Cool Skins is now the number one vet approved cooling device for dogs and Michael has made it his mission to pr protect our dogs from the brutal consequences of heat, travels the country educating pet owners on summer safety. You can learn all about Michael and the world's coolest dog vest at coolskins.co. That's cool with a K, K-O-O-L-S-K-I-N-Z.co. Also on Instagram at coolskins, K-O-O-L-S-K-I-N-Z and his customers and the products use the hashtag cool squad k-o-o-l-s-q-a-d um, also if you want to get a cool squad a, a cool skin of your own for your dog head over to school cool coolskins.co and use the code denver dog for 20 percent off plus free shipping so michael welcome thank you so i kind of took a while on that intro there why don't you uh take a while Got you a little tongue twisted with the spelling of our of our product huh <laughs> yeah, it threw me for a, a bit of a loop there. Yeah. Why don't you take a second to fill in anything I might have missed and we'll get right into your story. Yeah, I, th I mean, I think you captured it. Uh, my inspiration for creating this product, as you mentioned, was that I had a friend who lost a dog on the trail about nine years ago, died a heat stroke right out on the trail. And I've been a dog lover my whole life and a huge hiker my whole life and always had my dogs with me and didn't realize that that was such an issue. Started doing some research and realized that tens of thousands of dogs every year actually suffer from complications related to overheating. Um, and this is during activity and not referring to dogs that are left in hot cars and those kinds mm. of things. Um, and yeah, so I, I, I did some research, realized, you know, I, I, most dog owners are clearly aware that there's more dogs in American households currently than there are children. So there's over 90 million dogs in the United States and only about wow. 75 million children. But as I mentioned, sadly, every year, tens of thousands of dogs suffer from complications related to overheating. And the reason why is because dogs can't sweat and they can't cool themselves like humans. So uh, while they pant and they can expel heat that way, they can't usually dispel heat fast enough, especially when they're participating in active, um, at, you know, act activities out in warmer weather. Um, so I went out and purchased all the products I could get my hands on um, that claim to do something to help cool your dog. And many people probably purchased some of these similar products themselves. Mm -hmm. And I realized that they all kind of suffer from two things. So one is that they're big, bulky, and stiff. And they can actually wear sores on your dog over long periods of time, depending on where they fit and how they rub on your dog. And not a single product on the market, whether it be a vest, a collar, a dog bed, or anything along these lines, um, none of them last longer than about 15 minutes to actually cool your dog, wow. which is kind of pointless if you're out doing a hike. So I spent the next seven years uh, doing some research and developing the product that you see today, which we refer to as pet performance wear. So think of it as like Under Armour for your dog. Got it. So you know, you mentioned some of the problems with other products out there, like I'm not familiar with these other products. So what are some of those? And you know, how does yours? Um, how, how did you guys solve that problem? I'll also do a screen share here for those watching on YouTube, so they can kind of see um, right. the product up, up close. Yeah, so that uh, the video that you see there, which is the color, the picture of the dog in, in multi colors there is from a company called Digitherm. And they use a visual technology that can actually uh, test the temperature that your dog is experiencing over time. So um, on our website, if you watch the video and you let it run, you see kind of the red areas there show where the dog is heating up the most. And you notice that the top of the dog in blue is where they're the coolest. And the reason why this is, is because dogs, doesn't matter if they have long hair or short hair, have this kind of extra subcutaneous fat layer. And it's, a, it's nature's way of protecting them from wild animal attacks. Um, so that creates that barrier for them. Um, and they, you can't really cool a dog over the top of their back. And most of the products on the market actually do, that's how they're designed. Mm. Um, because dogs are very difficult to fit and size and all these kinds of things. And an over the back design. So the number one selling product on the market is, is by a brand called Rough Wear. Um, and their product name is called the Swamp Cooler. And it's literally the equivalent of like you and I putting on a burlap sack 
pouring a gallon of water on yourself and saying, I'm going to go run a marathon. Mm -hmm. Not very comfortable and completely ineffective. Um, Ruffler makes some excellent products in the, in the way of harnesses and packs and different systems there. But again, how that particular product fits on your dog, it buckles underneath the front armpit. Um, and again, as your dog is in motion and, and moving over time, it can wear sores on them. And you have to constantly pour water on the product um, to keep it effectively working. So they're using a method called evaporative cooling. Um, and again, it, it's really not that comfortable for the animal. In fact, we get a lot of our customers um, respond and say, gee, I like the, our, your product so much better because this other product where I had to put water on my dog actually mats my dog's fur. It's not comfortable. I have to carry so much water with me, et cetera. So I designed our product so that you could, A, it works for up to two hours in 90 plus degree weather. It was important for me that obviously that it met that time frame. First and foremost, I wanted to make sure that it was completely comfortable for the animal to wear. Um, so again, that's why we refer to it as Under Armour for your dog. So if you're looking at this picture here and you see these two beautiful boxers here, you notice how the underbelly design, uh, and even in that front kind of armpit area, if you will, is pulled away from where the dog's rub and, and, and friction is. And so that allows us to make sure that they can wear it all day long. So we use a proprietary cooling agent. Um, it's in a small pack. Um, I don't know if your viewers can see me or not on the camera, but the pack is a liquid pouch like this. Mm -hmm. um, it's clear when it's what we call neutral state. So in this state, it's really not doing anything. You stick this pouch in a cooler, a freezer, a cold mountain stream for as little as 20 minutes, and then it comes out and it's more opaque like this. It's not super cold to the touch like you would expect ice or water to be mm -hmm. um, because I didn't want it to burn the dog's skin if it got too close. But what this solution is doing is it's actually working to absorb heat because it wants to get back to its neutral state. So its goal is always to be in neutral. Um, and so when it's cold, it's pulling in as much heat as it can. So our product works and why it's so effective is because it's not only pulling heat away from the dog's body because our vest has three pockets in it. So one in the chest area and two down on the lower side bellies. These are the spots where we can get close to the dog's skin regardless of their hair length. Um, and so it's, per it's pulling heat away from the dog's body, but then more importantly, it's protecting the dog from the heat reflection that they're picking up from the ground below. So we all are very aware that when it's, you know, 80 degrees outside as an example, the surface temperature of the ground they're walking on could be upwards of 120 degrees. And they're picking up most of that heat reflection from the ground below. So our vest design, which we have a patent on, um, helps protect them from that heat reflection. This is why those over the back design products don't typically work. Got it. And in the, um, you know, the, the picture I'm looking at here, it almost looks like a little bit like a kind of has kind of almost, almost a, you know, a camelback shape kind of thing on, on the front of the dog. And like you said, it's, it keeps the, the armpits um, free to move. And then, so there's an ice pack there kind of on, on the chest and then a, a, additionally one on each side, like on the rib area, sort of. Yeah, it's just, right? be, it's just below the rib cage. So it fits just kind of on the, on the sides of the underbelly there. Got it. Um, and, it, and just to be clear, it's not ice. So it's a, it's an organic um, plant-based material that we use. So it's, it's all organic, it's food grade safe. So if the packs were to rupture or something along those lines, it wouldn't harm the animal. Mm -hmm. um, but it works differently than ice where ice typically is pushing cold out. Um, our product is actually pulling heat in. Mm -hmm. So that's why we're able to be effective in that way. And so what's in between the, uh, or, or what is the, what's actually in contact with um the dog it's not it's not the pack it's some other it's, it's another... not the pack itself because there's there's three pockets sewn on the inside of the vest so that they just simply hold the packs themselves mm -hmm. um and the fabric that we use is actually the same fabric that professional athletes wear in their uniforms so think like football player pants it's literally the same fabric comes from the same factory um so we that's why we always say pet performance wear um and so it's stretchy, it's form fitting, it's breathable. Um, and it's just, it has kind of this compression feature to it. So that's why we refer to it as like Under Armour for your dog, mm -hmm. because the compression aspect of it, we're able to hold the packs close to the dog's body. Um, and the fabric is, it's super durable and you can wash it to, it's popular with a lot of sporting breeds as well. Cool. So I'm on, on the site here. I think uh, people can 
see my screen here. So this is the Cool Skins Pet Vest, seventy nine ninety five, and you've got um, looks like about eight different sizes. So I have Correct. Nine yeah, we, sizes. I always say we we fit dogs from six pounds to one hundred and sixty pounds. Very cool. So the so who who's what who's this I'm looking at here? Yeah, that, that's my little girl right there. She's about nine weeks old in that picture. Really? Clearly, that vest doesn't <laughs> doesn't fit her, but she makes for a great supermodel. Um, and that's Chai. Name, I have that right. Yeah. Uh, her name is Grace, actually. Grace, so okay. Chai was is my one of my original boxers, and unfortunately, we lost him just about six months ago. So he's oh, the sorry, yellow, yellow one there on the oh, got it. right side. He's uh, he lived to be about thirteen and a half years old, though, which is extremely old for a boxer breed. Wow. If you're familiar with that, so nice job. Yeah. So uh, six pounds all the way to would you say a hundred and. 160. Yep. So I got them on a lot of Malmutes and Burmese mountain dogs and great Pyrenees is popular breeds here in Colorado. Wow. Very cool. So what, you know, with all those different sizes, what, what are the, what, what's the, the typical size that you, or the most common size that you sell? Yeah, it's hands down a medium. So a medium fits dogs about 40 pounds to about 70 pounds. Okay. Um, there's a lot of stretch and given the product, there's a adjustability in the waistband itself. Um, so you have some flexibility to do that. You don't have to take measurements. We just simply do it by weight. Uh, medium size hands down fits a majority of, of the dogs that we fit. And it, it's, I, oh, there we go. So there's kind of a, a yep. picture. It's basically open over over the, the back. Do I have that Correct. right? Correct. Yep, that's right. correct. Yep. Nice. And you've got a few other products as well. What are some of the, the highlights? Yeah, so we so again, it's all really about the performance of your of your dog and keeping them healthy during that time. So we're working on uh, the full development of a pet performance tracker. Hmm. Um, so think of it as like a GPS or a Fitbit, if you will, for your dog so that we can, um, you know, monitor your dog's activity and different things like that. I'm in development on enhancing some of the base features so that we can monitor heart rate and temperature and things like that. So temperature is a very difficult thing to measure. Um, in dogs, because the only real way you can do it is, you know, through a, a, a rectal uh, probe, and that's obviously not comfortable for your dog when we're out and about. So there's a couple of newer technologies and companies that I'm in conversation with about developing something that will fit within the vest itself, um, and and hopefully give us some data and some feedback there. Um, we have kind of a, a bungee leash um, for people that like to run with their dogs, so you have some flexibility there. And the number one question I always get is, do I make this product for humans? Uh, and we do. Bungee leash? Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, we do have a, a runner's belt that I'm developing right now that will um, have three pockets in the back that hold our proprietary cooling solution in it. So keep the runner cool. You attach your bungee leash to it. You put your vest on your dog and you can run and hike, enjoy yourself hands-free and stay cool for hours on the go. And, and the, the bungee leash is in development. Is that right? Correct. Yep. Okay. And what's the, the fun flyer? So like a frisbee? Yeah, it's just a, it's just a fun little giveaway. So a uh, local company here in Denver that was making our vest, uh, my, the person that does the process known as dye sublimation, that's how we put the patterns on there, uh, was toying around with some different product. And uh, we bought up some, a, a handful of those to give away nice. primarily when we do special events and things like that. And um, I think I saw there's on one on the how it works part of your website there, there was a couple different designs. So there's one yep. with, uh, that looked like your standard red one with uh, paws and then you have was a skull and crossbones one. So yep. uh, how, 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 how does it work in terms of the design? Yes. Yeah, so we do. We, we have four primary patterns. And so when you look on the shop feature and you actually go to purchase and you select your size, the four patterns that you'll see are what we call red bones, which is hands down the most popular pattern itself. Um, and it's red and it's got some white bone patterns on it. That's what you see these two dogs wearing here in front of the maroon bells. Um, the green floral, which you're clicking on there, is our next most popular pattern. Um, and then the pink polka dot. And then we have a skull and crossbones, uh, which is a pretty popular pattern, especially for smaller dogs. Um, and then that red bones pattern is hands down our most popular. Now, all that being said, we do actually do custom orders. So we have a lot of customers that have their own brand or their own logo. A lot of dog breeders and dog walking companies as an example, and we can put that like on me. there. 
Yeah. <laughs> um, and we can, so we can put your logos and kind of branding all over it. I always jokingly say you can upload a picture of grandma's face on there if you want. <laughs> I'm sure grandma is looking for grandchildren, not grand dogs, but you know, we can appease her how, however we can at the time. Um, and so we do some one-off customs like that as well. Wow. Very cool. Yeah. I mean, I have a brand just for golden retrievers, right? Okay. Of, of, of supplements is, you know, named after, um, and done in honor of my dog. Um, so, Hey, maybe there's a, a golden retriever, um, bulk order coming your way at some point uh, as I continue I like to, to grow. So I just yep. curious how, I mean, that's uh, adds a lot of complexity. So how do you get, um, that fabric done like that? Yeah, so it's the, the process that we make the vest is so I buy the, the fabric itself in bulk. Um, and then what happens is I we do what, a process called die cutting. And so the fabric gets folded, runs through a, a big expensive machine that's probably half the size of your house. Um, and they simply cut the patterns out. So it's a white blank template. And then they kind of sit on a shelf until the orders come in. And then as the orders come in, I say, you know, I need 50 of the red bones and medium or whatever the case is. And then as your as the custom orders come through, we're able to work them in through that batch production. So um, the one thing that people just have to understand with with the custom designs is that you have to be a little bit patient because we do batch production maybe four times a year uh, because we order in, in in larger quantities so we can try to fulfill orders when they, when they come in online and, mm -hmm. and different things like that and so um, I'm happy to do it there's no additional charge to do it you just have to be a little bit patient so that it gets worked in if I did a one-off as an example um, just for you and just printed one vest from start to finish for you and all hand sewn and everything along those lines would be probably three times what you see it listed for on the yeah. website yeah <laughs> <laughs> there's strength in numbers yes there is <laughs> so um you know in addition to using using cool skins and of course you talked about your friend's dog who died of of heat stroke what are some other tips you have for pet parents out there in terms of keeping their dog cool in in the summertime yeah and it's i appreciate you asking that because it's it's first and foremost it's really critical for people to understand that this product is something to help make your dog more comfortable it's not going to prevent the worst case scenario in extreme situations um, and we try to advertise that and promote that with the packaging and and everything that we do there so it's really important there but when you when you think about things like taking your dog on a hike or a run or any kind of activity where it's warm outside even just walking through the park um, it's I, I just can't, can't stress enough for you to be constantly aware of the temperature that's outside. So for things like hiking, as an example, or running, we strongly encourage people to go in the early morning hours before the sun gets high and the ground starts to heat up. That's clearly the best time to get out there um, with your dog. If you are out there and your dog is starting to experience some complications related to heat, you need to look for signs and symptoms that they're displaying heavy panting, lots of drooling. They want to lay down in the shadiest spot they can find along the trail, those kinds of things. It's time for you to start to question yourself on whether or not you should be out there or if it's time to head back. Because the unfortunate thing and the reason why so many dogs die when they, when they start to experience this overheating is because they're typically too far away to get help. So, you know, you're, you can pick up your dog and run back to your car, but by the time you get them to a vet or something like that, it's too late. Um, so just be kind of um, cautious about that. Bring water with you, lots and lots of water, especially if you're hiking along a trail that doesn't have water running next to it, like a stream or a creek. Um, and if you can keep your water cold for your dog. So the, there's only a couple, a handful of ways that you can actually help cool a dog. So as I mentioned, panting um, is certainly one way that dogs expel heat from their body, but they don't, and as I mentioned before, dogs can't sweat, although they do have a small amount of sweat glands in the pads of their feet. And so again, remember they're hiking on a surface that's way hotter than the air temperature outside. And that's the only place they can cool themselves. And so if you can get them, uh, you know, get their paws exposed to some cold water, some cold shady grass, whatever the case happens to be, to, and, and wait for them to actually kind of recover mm. before you continue on um, in your hike or head back um, in that way. So that's typically, you know, again, I, I can't stress enough for you to set your alarm clock a little bit earlier and just hit the trail a little bit earlier in the day. Yeah. Yeah. It seems like water is such a big one and that's where, you know, if you're out for a, a long time, carrying a lot of water is not, not easy. Right. So, yeah. 
Yep. And that's why I designed our solution. So I specifically designed it so it could be what we call recharged on the go. So if you are hiking somewhere next to a stream or a creek or a river or something like that, and you stop for lunch, pull the packs out of the vest, drop them in the creek, uh, 10, 15 minutes later, they're good to go again for another two hours. Mm. So these packs can be recharged indefinitely. Um, they're tested in a lab for 10,000 cycles. So that means hot, cold, hot, cold. Um, and they, they kind of can go indefinitely. So if the, the, the only risk is if they were to puncture and it happens very, very rarely. Um, and that's typically because the dog's running through a thick brush or something like that. And a stick goes through um, the pouch itself. And what is the actual material inside the pouch? It's a proprietary solution, but I can just tell you that it's all organic. It's completely biodegradable um, and it's food grade safe. So it's packaged in a food packaging plant right here in Denver. Okay. And so if it did puncture and a dog dr drank it all, what would yep. happen? It, nothing. It's, okay. it's kind of the equivalent of you and I putting salad dressing on our salad. Okay. So, yeah. I don't, now, the, the biggest risk is them uh, chewing on the plastic. So, uh, but the solution itself can't harm them. Okay. Yeah. Now, you know, in your experience, do you notice that there are any um, specific breeds or any other characteristics, traits of dogs that who tend to be more prone or, or sure. have more, um, you know, instances of heat stroke? Yep. So hands down, short snouted dogs. So boxers, like I'm, I'm affectionate with um, French bulldogs, you know, these kinds of dogs with short stubby noses hmm. can't expel heat quite as efficiently as a long snouted dog. Um, and so they tend to overheat and suffer from complications a lot faster than other breeds do. Hmm. So you have to be extremely cautious with those breeds. Um, and, and that's, that's what you need to do. Dogs that are overweight, obviously, um, can suffer, uh, from complications as well, a lot faster than a dog that's lean and in good shape. And what about uh, skin coat color or coat color? Coat color actually doesn't matter. Um, so I get a ton of people, you know, constantly reach out like, oh, my dog is black. It, you know, it attracts the sun. And yes, that's probably true. But as I showed you in that video earlier with the over the back design kind of concept in the video production um, that's on that website, dogs don't actually get hot from the back from the top of their body. That's specifically why I designed the product and it's open on the back. Um, it doesn't matter if they have long hair or short hair. The biggest risk that you have with the exposure to the sun is typically with short haired breeds because they can actually get sunburn just like humans can. So if, the, if they're in the direct sun and they have thin coats, um, they can actually get sunburn on their skin. Got it. Now, before we talk, you were mentioning that you, you kind of operate cool skins on, on a few principles. Can you share what those are and say a little bit more about that? Sure. So as I kind of mentioned, I, you know, I'm a huge dog lover and super passionate about animals. And when I created this company, I wanted to make sure that we were doing it for the right reasons. So first and foremost, uh, we operate on the, the purpose of education. So we want to make sure that dog owners become the best dog owners they can and give their dogs the best lives that they can because those dogs give us such tremendous value and, and, and joy in our lives. So uh, I want to make sure that we're giving back to them in that way. And the second one is that we um, is advocacy. So we like to give a voice to the voiceless. So we do a lot of work uh, around supporting local animal shelters um, and trying to do whatever we can to help support those animals in need. And then number three is we just make cool products. So uh, I'm really about making things that are innovative and new and different and most importantly, effective. Got it. And in terms of those cool products, uh, anyone listening can go to coolskins.co and use the code DENVERDOG for 20% off their order um so michael uh i'm kind of out of out of out of questions here um because your product is you know super straightforward and you've got some cool things in the works any anything that um you know i i didn't ask that i should have um, no, if I, I mean, if I could just brag just a little bit more about our product, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really proud of what we created. Um, we've been vetted by vets that that pun is intended. Um, and we are now, uh, part of the fear free pet network. So if you're not uh, familiar with that, that's a network of over 60,000 vets worldwide that, um, go through a specialized kind of training to help. Uh, assess anxiety levels in animals and things mm. like that when you come in for and seven of their vets have tested our product on their own personal animals and came back and said 
this thing's legit. Um, they vouch for it. It's now listed as a featured product on their site. We were listed as the top 10 camping product in 2018 by the wow. Dirt Magazine, D-Y-R-T. Um, and again, it's because of some of the features of our product. So you can recharge the coolness as you go. Um, I designed, I do a lot of camping and a lot of hiking, as I mentioned. And so you can cool those packs off in your regular camping cooler that's got some just ice water. Um, stick it in that stream, stick it in that lake, wherever you're at. Anytime the temperature falls below 59 degrees, the packs start to become what we call charged. So obviously if it's colder, if it's closer to 30 degrees, they charge really quickly. If it's 45 degrees, they take a little bit longer to charge, but you can charge them in as little as 10 or 15 minutes. And then they go for up to two hours at a time. The same pack, we didn't really talk that much about this, doubles as a warming agent. So you can stick that pouch in a pot of boiling water if you're out camping on your camp stove or stick it in your microwave at home and warm it up and it'll actually keep the dog warm for about 45 minutes at a time. Wow. So it kind of serves as dual purposes and I think that's why we got some of the credit that we got in the, the Dirt Magazine. Um, and now we're obviously getting into the warmer months and in in some of the peak season uh, here and we have daily product sales on our website and I'm, I'm very proud of that. We have product on over 2,500 dogs in seven different countries, and we have yet to have a single return or a single complaint. Wow, excellent, so, congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Very, very cool product. I mean, thank um, you very much. You know, you look at it and it, it's, uh, it, 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 it just, um, what's the word? It just feels like it has a nice, elegant fit and super, you know, clear um, value to the dog, so. Yeah, I, I, I wanted the dog's comfort to be the number one thing in the whole process. And my, my poor dogs uh, had two boxers um, during the time that I was developing this product and they got to be my guinea pigs for a long time. So a lot of safety pins and a lot of duct tape because I'm not a sewer by, by trade. Um, <laughs> and I had to teach myself a lot about the sewing industry for sure. Excellent. Yeah. All right, Michael, well, anything else you'd like to share with our listeners before we close out here? just get out there and have fun with your dogs and make sure you love them the best that you can. All right. Thanks so much, Michael. Yeah. Michael Beavis with Cool Skins. Learn all about uh, Cool Skins vests at K-O-O-L-S-K-I-N-Z dot co. And again, podcast listener, listeners can use the code Denver Dog for 20% off their order. All right, Michael. Thanks so much. Okay. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Take care.